Go Figure, Contemporary Chinese Portraiture is an exhibition that is shown across two venues, the Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation, where we are here today, and the National Portrait Gallery in Canberra. Um, it's a unique partnership between those two um, institutions, and I guess because of the partnership with National Portrait Gallery, there is a focus on portraiture very broadly defined. So um, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to select from within the SIG collection, uh, based in Switzerland, um, which has recently been, or well, the majority of the collection has recently been donated to M Plus Museum, new museum that will open in Hong Kong in 2017. So, um, but that was all announced, you know, well after we'd begin this process, begun this process of um, preparing the exhibition. So I had the task of um, coming up with a coherent show across two venues that drew on this large collection, some 2,200 works, 350 artists um, spanning um, the period really uh, from the late 1970s to the present. So as a curator that was a very exciting uh, prospect um, and certainly having to have a focus um, on portraiture that made the job easier in that, I mean, suddenly you were narrowing it down quite significantly. The earliest work uh, which you can see in Canberra at the National Portrait Gallery uh, is a small sculptural piece uh, by Wang Keping, who was one of the STARS artists. Um, the STARS group was the earliest, um, one of the earliest avant-garde groups um, in China. Uh, famously, they organised um, a spontaneous exhibition of their works on the railings um, on the park fence adjacent to the National Art Museum of China. And this included paintings and, and these wooden sculptures. Um, that's when a large art community became aware of Wang Keping's sculpture. So this uh, work called Cadre, Cadre um, as in communist Cadre, um, is uh, from that period, around that time, 1979, um, 1980. And it's um, modest work really, using found materials, a piece of, of wood, and he just hollows out um, to uh, cavities for the eyes and really works with the wood grain. So it really is um, indicative of that time period where artists um, didn't have a lot of money. Uh, many of these early avant-garde artists, if we describe them in that way, um, were using found materials. They were not very wealthy. Um, they didn't have much money. There was no art market. You know, this was just after the end of the Cultural Revolution. So they were regarded as, as very um, different, um, shocking, uh, socially engaged, some of them politically engaged works. So that's, that's really the, the beginning point. Um, and I really wanted the show to have a shape of, you know, the last uh, 30 years of contemporary Chinese art practice. So, you know, the uh, most recent work, a um, uh, couple of works from 2001, um, there's another sculptural work called um, Loudspeaker dedicated to her by young artist He Xiang Yu, whose work we saw at Gallery 4A, the Coca-Cola project. Um, he usually works in a monumental scale, but this is um, a single microphone, sort of anthropomorphic looking loudspeaker, similar to those that were used in the founding ceremony of the People's Republic of China um, in uh, 1st of October 1949. Um, and there is a, a tape, a loop, um, of Mao's words declaring the founding of the People's Republic of China. So that's a very good example of the type of portraiture um, that people are likely to see in this exhibition. Um, so sometimes there is no obvious body. I mean, it's an embodiment of, of a person or sometimes it's a reference to a hand or a body part, you know, skin, hair. So all of the works reference um, the figure or the body. Um, some are very conventional portraits, like the portrait of Uli Sig by Ai Weiwei, titled Newspaper Reader. Um, ironically, you could say that it's one of the most conservative works in the exhibition in terms of its hyper-real um, portrait status. Um, but, you know, Ai Weiwei uh, is an artist who uh, is really, I guess, a conceptual artist who ranges widely across media. And, and this is a very personal work. Um, it's a work that Ai Weiwei made as a gift to Uli Sig to thank him for organising his um, first solo show, I think it was, um, um, many years ago now. Um, and so it was a, you know, that Uli Sig has many, has developed many strong friendships with artists and so to have that work um, 
you know, as the first work that visitors will see as they enter Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation, you know, is a nice sort of statement. Um, the exhibition includes a great variety of media, um, ranging from sculptural pieces. Uh, there are a lot of paintings at the National Portrait Gallery show. There are a number of uh, video and photo works and a, a one large-scale installation that's at, at Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation. I guess um, there are a couple of works that really are very powerful and evoke strongly uh, the themes of the exhibition. The themes of the exhibition um, that really relate to both sites um, are thematic. Um, so I wanted the show to both have a chronological shape but, but more, more importantly a thematic shape. Um, and so the th four themes are about face, body politic, skin deep and self reflex. So again they're all referencing the body in some kind of loose way. Um, and so within those themes, there are some earlier works and some later works. So I've, I've jumbled up the chronologies consciously because I see this period, you know, that began really with the reforms and opening up of China to the outside world in 1978. You know, I see that as an ongoing process. You know, we've still got the same single party kind of government. So that's a constant. Um, and yet we've had this amazing um, boom um, of uh, the economy and you know material kind of developments in China so you know you've got this strange tension um, at play you know that you see uh, reflected in the works in some of the very recent works um, one of the really iconic works I think um, is by Wang Jianwei whose major artist has been uh, his work's been shown here at the Asia Pacific Triennial um, one of the early triennials um, and in other shows um, in uh, art space and other venues around Australia. Um, he's well known as a video artist but he, now he also works in theatre um, and performance. But there, there's a um, two channel video piece called From the Masses to the Masses and it's really, it encompasses a macro and a micro view of China. Um, the macro view um, starts in Tiananmen Square, you know the camera is focused there and then uh, takes the viewer on a journey um, through China really, um, looking at life as it is taking place, as he is viewing it, as he's choosing to see it um, in, in the cities, in rural places. So you get this real sense of continuities you know, with the past and also discontinuities with the incredible kind of uh, development, uh, physical um, consumer society. And then paired to that, you know, smack bang next to it is another video um, which is very closely uh, framed on a group of young school children who are assembled for their morning exercises. They're wearing, you know, uh, red neckties um, indicating, you know, their membership of um, the Young Pioneers, um, a communist kind of youth group, and they are responding to instruction. Um, and so, you know, they're there as a collective kind of group, but then when you look at them, they're all responding differently to the camera and to, you know, you know, they're bored and they're moving about and they're like kids anywhere. So you've got this sort of strange sense of the collective and yet the individual. You know, you've got the micro view and the macro view. And so I think, you know, an artist like Wang Jianwei, he's working with these stereotypical ideas of what China is, but then bringing it back to the individual. And that's really what we wanted to explore in this show. Um, it's not an official view of China. Um, and Chinese art, uh, we've thrown it back on the artists and working through um, a private you know, collection, we've been able to really bring the individual to the fore and through their work looked at individual responses to life in China and society and culture and art in China over the last um, 30 years. Um, so I think that's a very powerful work. Um, another. Another work that also is very striking is here at Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation. It's the largest installation in the Go Figure exhibition and it's called Old People's Home. It's by Sun Yuan and Peng Yu who are a husband and wife team and it is 13 motorised wheelchairs that perambulate the gallery space. They're fitted with sensors um, and so when they're um, sensing what's in front of them they stop and reorient. But um, seated in the wheelchairs are these very elderly old men 
who are dressed in either military uniform, religious robes, uh, western suit and ties, very formal. Um, and they're all carrying something, you know, or wearing something that gives a, hints at what their former life might have been. And they are hyper-real um, depictions, actually talking to the artist, um, you know, they're modelled on real people. He, whenever he was travelling the world, um, he would uh, look out for people who he found interesting and who he was able to approach. Mostly they were, um, you know, he described them as people who were destitute, drunkards, uh, buskers, I mean people who he could engage in conversation, who he thought might agree to have their photographs taken, pose for him, he paid them for that. And, um, and then uh, once that period of research, which took two or three years, was complete and he had his group of people and he wanted, he wanted to gather together a group of people who looked as though they might represent some kind of a world gathering. Um, uh, and then started dressing them, attaching real hair, so the human hair, um, working with silica gel to create um, a really lifelike uh, appearance of skin using human hair. Um, so great attention to detail to create this real sense of a person. And they're slumped in their chairs, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're in an old people's home. The artist talks about you know, wanting to express something that related to the difficulty of intercultural communication. Um, certainly as a viewer, you reflect on them in terms of you know, power that has been lost, you know, the transience of power, but also life. You know, it's a very poignant, um, interesting work that because of its hyper-real quality can't help but involve you emotionally in the work and that is a characteristic of these two artists work they seek to do something quite different but they want to they want to um, sometimes they want to shock you but they want to move you you know they want you to think about um, things so they're you know very strong kind of conceptual artists and certainly I know from talking to a few people um, friends who visited the show um, a couple of people uh, really thought they were living people, <laughs> you know, and interacted with them in a certain way. Um, so I think that's exactly the kind of um, response that the artist would like. I mean, the other thing that's quite special about this uh, installation is that, vi you know, because it's in a uh, Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation, in a, in a contemporary gallery space, um, that is quite intimate, visitors are able to walk into and through the installation. So, and the, and the artist was delighted with this, really delighted with this. He said, um, you know, it's, it's an installation, you know, that actually uh, realises his idea for the exhibition in terms of audience engagement in a way that it, he, it, ha it hasn't done in other venues where it's been um, displayed. And there's that conscious sort of um, idea of the un uncanny, I suppose. I mean, the, when uh, the press preview was held here, all of the journalists said, well, who's that and who's that and who's that? And um, really the artist continually said, well, you know, he wasn't intentionally wanting to create a portrait of any particular kind of world leader, but of course the way he's dressed them you know, they are portraits of individuals, but the way he's dressed them, I mean, they have this um, resonance, I guess, uh, with particular people. Um, and so whilst they're not strict portraits of those people, um, and I think it would be a less interesting work if they were just modelled on, you know, these kind of former dictators or world leaders or, you know, religious leaders, um, you know, it's interesting that there's, there's this blurring of the boundaries and, you know, and, you know, as, as the artist also said, you know, that he found when you, you know, when you get a, a group of elderly people in a room, you know, they sort, you know, the, and when they're, you know, if they're suffering from dementia, um, you know, they're not themselves any longer and, you know, there is this um, homogenizing process that happens with age, you know, where people, you know, lose some of the striking characteristics that they might have had in life or which people, you know, people particularly who are in the public eye, you know, are identified as having. And so you do get this strange um, melding, if you like, of um, characters. And so you can't really pin your, you know, pinpoint who they might be. And it was interesting, um, you know, 
the artist was asked repeatedly, well, why did you create this work? And, you know, he said, and you can't always trust what artists say, of course, but, you know, these are quite interesting um, things to consider. Um, you know, he said he wanted to create a toy for himself. Um, he wanted to create a plaything, you know, something that, you know, played with some big ideas. Um, but he also said he wanted to, um, you know, as a young person, and he's a, you know, of the younger generation of Chinese artists, um, you know, that he's very conscious of the fact that the world is run by these powerful, you know, male, often white sort of figures, and that he wanted to strip them of their power. You know, he wanted to bring them all together, um, strip them of their power, and for him to be in control, and, and sort of, sort of re-inscribe the kind of, you know, historical narrative. It's such a privilege, really, for audiences, I think, to have the opportunity to see works from the SIG collection. You know, it is the largest um, and most comprehensive collection of contemporary Chinese art anywhere in the world, or it was until, you know, this donation was made. Um, and it's not going to be on display at M Plus Museum until 2017, so there's a wonderful chance for Australian audiences to get a preview of what will become you know, a very important um, institution for the display of contemporary art from Hong Kong, China and Asia. Um, Australians uh, will be familiar with uh, many of the artists who are in included um, in the show, but these are major, you know, the SIG collection contains major works um, and works that uh, some, you know, some will be familiar, but many, many won't. Um, you know, China is a strange cultural space. Um, it's, there is no uh, institution yet in China, a public institution, that has a collection of contemporary Chinese art like this. So, you, ha you know, you're forced to um, go to galleries. Um, there are increasing number of private collections in China, private collectors, um, private museums. Um, you know, there are many exhibitions that are being staged. But something of this um, scope um, is unusual. So I think it's a very interesting time. Um, obviously in China um, the art market is still huge. Um, there has been a lot of official interest in contemporary Chinese art, using it as a soft power kind of mechanism to promote a, you know, China in a particular kind of way. Um, but, but the contemporary, but artists, individual artists, you know, are um, I think individual artists are interested in, in their works being seen more independently, you know, in the context of art rather than, you know, politics. Um, and I, there are some big museum projects that are on the books. New National Art Museum of China, um, the new venue for the Shanghai Biennale. Um, and so I think in the years to come there will be some exciting uh, venues for contemporary art that are official venues. Um, the challenge will be to see what kind of art is put in those 21st century kind of buildings um, and whether it in fact ma matches a lot of the rhetoric um, or whether it's just a, an official kind of version um, and a, you know, in a sense sanitised version um, of the kind of practice that is actually happening. Um, you know, one of the great virtues of the SIG collection is that, you know, he only had himself to uh, persuade as to whether or not, you know, a work was um, worthy of his acquisition. Um, and he describes it as a document. It's a document that he's prepared over the last 30, um, well, the collection spans the last, the last 30 years, he's collected over the last 20 years. Um, and he, whilst it reflects his taste, um, he actively wanted to represent the breadth um, of contemporary practice that's happening in China, um, has been happening in China over this uh, period of time. So I think it is a, um, a wonderful, you know, uh, introduction to uh, contemporary Chinese art.